it's not mindset work that I do. It's a different level besides mindset because mindset's important. Personal development, personal growth is important. But what I have found in working with my clients who have that experience in that part of the world, it just created an awareness for them, but there were no answers on how to deal with the stuff that was showing up for them. So I'm the how. Hey there, and welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Emmy Kirshner. I'm a serial entrepreneur, investor, and business coach for ambitious women who are boldly taking their business to the next level. And I believe that building a successful business isn't about working 24-7 just to merely meet a revenue goal. What it does take is a unique blend of dedication to purpose, courageous action, and frequently sheer will to overcome the odds that lead to meaningful impact and experiencing a life well lived. In each episode, you'll get to know the women and men who are unafraid to put it all on the line as they share the stories of success and failure that have made them incredible leaders and the magic they gift the world with. As you're listening, and I hope finding value, don't forget to share the Tribe of Leaders podcast with all of your other entrepreneurial friends and to follow us wherever you're listening to this podcast. Hey Tribe, it is that time again where I get to have another one of my friends and colleagues come and interview me in podcast takeover land. This week I have... Judith Ritchie, who is the founder of A Force for Transformation, taking control of the mic and asking the questions. And we had a super fun conversation. Um, A little bit about Judith. She left a successful career that from the outside looked like she had it all going on. And what only a few people knew was how completely miserable she was and how unhealthy she was. So she took some really bold action, got her life together, started a path to finding healing and transformation, and she's turned that healing and her experiences into her business and how she helps her clients release negative energies, trauma, hurtful generational and family patterns, and damaging life experiences that are holding them back from living the amazing life that they know that they can have but can't quite figure out how to get there. So all of her information is uh, in the show notes. She has very generously offered to have uh, a call with anybody who is interested in finding out more and how they can let go of some stuff that may be holding them back. So the link to schedule with her is in the show notes as well. And I have to say she's just such a warm generous, incredible person. So highly recommend connecting with her. And as for our interview, you really get to see the inner workings of my brain and how I think through and my mindset about overcoming obstacles, really looking at how I push limits and when I'm seeking to do that, you know, what's happening, what am I thinking and how do I keep from holding myself back? And we also talk about some of the habits that I have that she shares with me as well. And that my practice of all habits in general is something that is consistently inconsistent in that I may not be doing the same thing all of the time, but I am always always practicing something in a lot of different areas of my life that are helping me expand and grow. So let's dive in. Hey, Judith, thank you so much for interviewing me today. As I have with a couple of the other guests that have come on and and done the podcast takeover, I was thinking about when we met, like how long I've known you. And it's been a while. It's been like several hot minutes. (laughs) Yes, and that's so funny because when I was thinking about us chatting today, I uh, wanted to stay you know, on topic and make sure we didn't get down any rabbit holes, although that's okay too. And the very first thing I said was, we've known about that for a while. We've known each other for a while. Let's chat about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to just let you take the reins then since that's where you were going anyways. Um, oh, yeah. 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 Let's see. We met in Houston, right? No, I or think we York. met in New York City. New York City, yeah. And... Yeah, I had to have been in New York City because I was still um, working with Ivy Slater, who 
uh, is an amazing business coach. And, yeah. But it must have been oh, gosh. five or six years ago. At least, if yeah. not longer. Yeah. And and it's this is what I... Time ago, though. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Anything pre-COVID <laughs> feels like a lifetime. But a lot of life since then. <laughs> yeah. But this is what I love about business and being in events and like really getting to connect with people is that I have lots of friends that we've met at different places and different times. And we've just stayed connected. Even if we haven't talked to each other for a year or sometimes longer, when we come back together, it's it's just easy to pick up and celebrate each other's wins, acknowledge the losses, you know, appreciate the growth. Um, so I'm really honored that we're in each other's lives and that you're here today. Oh, thank you. I feel the same way. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny because that organization that I was with, when we were in that setting in New York, the thing that I took away from that was the relationships. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have such significant relationships from my time with that organization. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's really, I know the older I get, the more I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly the ones that last for years and years and years. And that's a conscious decision too. I saw something the other day. It was like, you know, if somebody's not reaching out to you and they're not keeping up with you and they're not calling you, it's not about you. It's about them. They're overwhelmed, blah, 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 blah. Yes. And Mm -hmm. when you nurture a relationship, it's because it has significance to you. It has meaning to you. Yeah. And uh, there's an action that comes in that too. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I don't want to give meaning to anything that I don't know what the truth is. And when people fall out of touch and and I'm not doing the work to re-engage that, you know, stuff's happening for them. And I feel like it's up to me to really make that shift and make the the overture to reconnect. You know, I have a couple of friends who've had really challenging times and I've you know, pinged them on Facebook or whatever and like, hey, just touch and base and I don't hear from them from them for months sometimes. And then they'll pop up and be like, you know, it's been, I've had a lot of stuff going on. And even though I haven't responded, I really appreciate you just touching base. And if I had been, you know, bent out of shape and upset about that and made some meaning, it doesn't, it's silly. I'd have all this stuff going on. That's really just a reflection of where my head's at and nothing with with them. So Agreed. agreed. I had a girlfriend who had a birthday. And I do these lovely hand-painted watercolor cards that I send people for the yeah. birthday. Oh, you need to get on my birthday list. <laughs> no, damn it, because I haven't gotten one. <laughs> it's May 2nd. The birthday is May 2nd. May 2nd. Okay, I'm writing it down. That's funny because I'm a May baby too. So I hadn't heard from her. And mm-hmm. it was like no acknowledgement. And this card was, if I say so myself, even though I bit painted it, it was like, gorgeous, beautiful, one of the best I'd ever done. And I was so proud of it. I hadn't heard from her, hadn't heard from her, nothing, nothing. Right, right. Finally, I saw her on Facebook and I was like, hey, you know, how have you been? Oh man, COVID's just been kicking me. I've been so sick. I just can't seem to get over. I was like, oh, okay. So I get it now. So now we're reconnected and we're, you know, we're scheduling time to visit with each other. Uh, We're in each other's calendars because it's that important to us. So, yeah. 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 And that's the other thing. It's like, I really have to schedule all of that stuff. Otherwise I just like get busy with my own randomness. <laughs> so I, I try to be intentional with keeping in touch with people. So, yeah. yeah. And one of the, the kind of goals that I've set for myself is to reach out to five people a week that I haven't talked to. And oh, I like that forever. Yeah. And like, hey, how are you? Hope things are good. <laughs> I like that. That's a that's an inspiration for me. I'm going to sit with that and see how I adapt that into what I do. Yeah. 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 Okay. So listen, you just got back from Italy, right? I did. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. And uh, I read that you had this horrifying and profound experience all at the same time. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. So I'm all about when the blank hits the fan 
what's the lesson in it? Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Same. So you had your phone stolen. I did. And it was the, the ironic funny thing is that I have said in the past that the worst thing that could ever happen to me was, was not having my phone, like losing wow. it. Healing hadn't ever actually come into my head, but like it fell out of my backpack at one point in the airport years ago and somebody picked it up and returned it. But I had one of those moments once when I realized that it was lost, that I was like, all right, it's going to show up and it's going to return to me right now. And I walked up to like the first help desk and there it was. Unfortunately, that was not the case of having my phone stolen while I was at lunch right in front of me. But it was really an interesting experience because that particular moment, I was exhausted. I hadn't slept. I was overwhelmed with just the energy of being with all these people that I didn't know. And the whole reason why I was having lunch was like, I just wanted to chill out and like regroup myself. And, and I'm sure this guy targeted me um, and had watched me for a little bit because there was a lot of like deep breathing and sighing and just like, all right, everything is good right now. And I'm going to go on to the next thing and go back to Rome and it's going to be great. So I wasn't as alert or careful because I know the scams and I know the stuff that people do and that, that this type of thing happens. I'm not oblivious to that. Um, but what happened was he I was at lunch. I had just texted somebody, put my phone down and he came up and pretended he was offering me like this local Italian paper. It was a tiny, two of them, tiny little ones. And when I was like, no, 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 I speak English, blah, blah, blah. He grabbed my phone when he pulled the, the paper away. So I noticed like right away, like he was probably 30 feet away from me and I'm in these cute little like sandal things. So I, of course, jump up and chase him screaming bloody murder. <laughs> like he took my phone, he took my phone. And had I not been wearing the sandals and something probably more you know, street appropriate, I probably wouldn't have caught him, but I would have gotten closer, which would have made my ego feel better. Yeah, yeah. But the learning part was like really key perspective. Cause after the, the moment of panic of like, all right, I am now in Florence by myself. I don't have any way to communicate with anybody. The only two phone numbers that I know are my kids and my one son is up at the crack of dawn, but he was already working and not going to be able to answer his phone. And the other one, it was like 4.30 or 5.30 in the morning and his phone shut off then anyways. So like, you know, that was it. All of my, I was getting ready to go back to Rome. So all of my stuff was in my girlfriend's car and I didn't know where they were or what their schedule was because I had bowed out of what we were doing because I was so tired. And so it, like that freeze moment, that panic moment, I don't think lasted very long. And then I started thinking, I'm like, all right, how do I fix this? Like, how do I get out of it? And just like really feeling the upset part. But once I started to calm down, then the, you know, the wheels start generating of, oh, well, I can go back to the parking garage if they don't come here and blah, blah, blah. So that all started to work out. But I have to say within an hour of the experience, like I wasn't, I was upset about not having my phone. I was worried about data getting stolen. Everything's on my phone. But we, I met up with my girlfriends again and we had a drink and I relaxed a little bit more. And within that time frame, I was like, you know, I feel badly for this man who has, this is what he's doing for a living. And it would be really easy for me to be angry. It would be really easy for that one experience to, you know, over kind of overpower all of the other things. Cause it was like the last part of the trip. Right. So it's like the last memory. And I was like, there's too many awesome things that have happened. Like I can't, it's not what I want to focus on. So it's really about the perspective of, you know, staying in a, in a, a place of positivity and, and abundance and, and going back to what I've said to clients and on Instagram and everywhere else, like it, it's really what you want to focus on. So yeah, it was, it was a fun experience. <laughs> and I thought I was going to say, it, it did give me, I mean, even more perspective in 
One, my ability to problem solve under pressure is still there. Yay me. Um, Two, that my ability to push my physical limits from not sleeping and being able to navigate someplace is, I felt really good about that part. And then the, oh, like there's no clock in my next hotel room. So how do I get up at 630 in case I actually go to sleep, you know, and I don't have my phone, which is what I normally use, or how do I do GPS when to get back from, so it's like navigating all these things, you know, from an analog standpoint, which it was just each step. I'm like, all right, well, this is how I'm going to handle it. And then I would reach out and ask for help. And, and that part was, I mean, frustrating at times, but also just kept me like, I kept laughing, like, all right, I can handle it. This is not the end of my existence. (laughs) And I love that you just said about reaching out and asking for help because you made connections you wouldn't have made otherwise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, both of my kids were, um, I got in touch with Brian, my older guy first, were really helpful. A friend of mine really stepped in and he called the place that I'd parked so they would come get me. And he just was a sounding board in general, which was awesome. And interestingly enough, I had asked a couple of friends to like going before I left, one of whom I'm like, I'm just going to share my location with you if you don't mind, because I've never traveled internationally by myself before. So I I had already put kind of some systems in place for making sure that I was traveling safely and being okay. And then I had a great conversation with one of the women that, that was in the wedding party um, when we were having cocktails that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And now you have a brand new shiny phone. Yeah. Now I have a brand new, very expensive, <laughs> shiny phone. <laughs> and it's the You'll same one, same color. Have <laughs> it cost cross, twice as much. <laughs> cross body bag that you wear next time that it will stay in the whole time. <laughs> I have that. <laughs> Wow. Wow. It's a phone. And look at all the things you got from it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got to connect with two different Verizon people who were really nice. And we were having problems logging into my account because all the normal like safety protocols required like the old phone, etc. And like they were determined to help me. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Verizon, a good plug for them. I love that. (laughs) first time. <laughs> and and honestly because I was so sensitive to the like this just happened, I think I told everybody that you know I saw between that moment and getting home Saturday night. So there was a lot of empathy and oh I'm so sorry that happened to you, but also I saw an immense amount of kindness from oh. other people doing for other people not even directed at me. And one of the things that stood out was that we were in line to go through um, customs coming back into the U S and this older couple had gotten separated in the line and they didn't want to bump line or anything. And this one woman was like, no, 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 he needs to come up here. And she was like, no, no, it's okay. We'll get through. And, you know, and they could see each other, but, and she was like, no, no, no. So she's like, finally, she's like, she's like, everybody, these two people are a couple. Do you care if they cut line? And everybody was like, of course not. I love that. (laughs) And like, that's, that's what life is really about for me is it's those moments and, you know, crappy stuff's going to happen. Yeah. Crappy stuff happens. And then it's up to us how we choose how to process it. Yeah. And And I don't, what we learn from it, what we take away from it or sit with it. You know, we can sit there. T- stuff too yeah yes we're allowed to swear on this podcast so we can sit in our shit <laughs> thank you <laughs> you know and sometimes we need to sit in our shit for a while because we that's part of the processing process to be redundant yeah, yeah. But it really is i mean because i have personally found if we try to move too quickly through what's showing up for us we miss a lot And then guess what? We get to do it again to pick up the stuff that we missed the first time or the second time or the third time. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I've, I've done that too. So, but I think, I mean, I think everybody's different and each experience is different with that. And there is the sitting period. I'm also very intentional and not that I've mastered it at every moment because I have not, but I choose not to live through fear or right. doubt or I'm going to just say negative feelings. I don't, that's not how I want to live my life from an information standpoint, right? Because I could have taken this in and been like, oh my God, this is so terrible. And, you know, people are going to steal from me and then take all these actions to right. that are really fear-based, right? And and not that I'm frolicking through fields, you know, barefoot, although I would that's aspire okay. to that, yeah. right? Like I really think about, I guess, risk analysis, right? And that was one of the things that, I was like, duh, like I had just gotten a new phone, the phone that was stolen and I didn't put insurance on it wow. because I generally don't ever put insurance on it because I've never in the however gajillion years I've had smartphones, never dropped them and or lost them. But had I really thought about risk from the standpoint of, hey, you're going to be traveling abroad with a new big phone and like then I would have made a different decision, but it hadn't occurred to me. And I didn't think about it when I was you know, getting, making the, the travel plans either. So new phone has travel, has a insurance on it now. <laughs> right. And it's just a, it's like a, like a financial risk. Yeah. I had to buy out the old phone and then buy the new phone. So, you know, some of you are like, duh, <laughs> which is exactly what I said to myself. So, well, and I'm sitting here hearing and what a wonderful thing that you can be grateful that you have the means to be able to do that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not how I choose to spend them, but it is but what it is. It is. It is what it is. All right. I'm going to ask you another question. Yeah. All right. So most of us who are entrepreneurs have had some sort of catalyst, be it good or bad that inspired or compelled us to start our own business and become an entrepreneur. So what was yours initially? Because you said there's a bunch, but what was your initial inspiration to become an entrepreneur? Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's a couple of different things. One, I think I'm fundamentally made not to follow directions or do the normal things. Like that's just like, if you look at, and I won't bore everybody with every moment, but if you look at all of the things that have happened in my life, I constantly and consistently have sought change or a different way to do things when things didn't meet my needs, which has, I think, benefited me a lot of times because I've had some really cool experiences because I, I was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not going to take this silly college class. Let's create something else or any number of other things. But I think there were really two foundational moments for me as far as starting the business. One was when Brian, who's 23 now, was born and he had massive digestive issues right at a year. And the doctors didn't know what was wrong, that nothing showed up in the tests. The last pediatric gastroenterologist that we saw was like, well, you can give him some olive oil on his food so that he doesn't lose any more weight, but other than that, we have no idea. Um, see you later. And and I was just to give age perspective too. I was really young. I was twenty seven at the time, twenty yeah, almost twenty eight. So one, I had no kid clue about kids, but I had no clue about anything at that point. And I just knew that wasn't okay. And I the the feeling of being dismissed pissed me off. So that was the catalyst of really diving into health and wellness, figuring it out on my own, using my kid as a, as a, an experiment of what, what went in and what came out. Right. right, Literally. Yeah. Also really being empowered with, I healed my kid and how can I help other people do that? Which is what led me into cooking. It's what led me to personal chef and catering and then health coaching and, and having a fundamental understanding that, like we have choices about how we want to feel and, you know, what's really what, who we want to be and how we want to show up. I think the next big thing kind of spinning off of that was my divorce. I had 
stopped working in corporate right before I had had Brian, like three weeks before I had Brian. And I had no, like the cool thing about being, you know, part-time stay-at-home mom and part-time all these other things was that I made my own schedule, which plays really well into my desire not to (laughs) play the normal person game. And I, I just, couldn't wrap my brain around working nine to five and trying to raise both of my kids on my own. So it, it started to become a, like a query of what can I do that I love that I'm passionate about, like my purpose is to serve and to help people. How do I do that? So, you know, I fumbled through a number of different things before starting the health coaching business and then very quickly learned that, well, that's really important to me. Our health and well-being is important. The way I get to serve women the most effectively is to help them grow and scale their business. Love that. I love but that. If I had stayed in my marriage, none of that would have ever happened. Like that's why that's a you know, catalyst kind of number two. Yeah. Is yeah. that I woke up and I mean, we were just talking about you know, being taken care of, Mm -hmm. I really had this belief that Prince Charming was going to come save me. And when you get divorced and you're all alone and there's two babies and, you know, there's not a lot of support happening, you can want Prince Charming to come on galloping by, but the reality was there wasn't anybody and there couldn't be anybody until I took ownership of myself. Right. And I remember a night where I was exhausted again, hadn't, I was really stressed out. So I wasn't sleeping. I put the TV on and put the boys in front of it, which wasn't my norm. And I was just sitting in this chair, exhausted, tired, stressed out, frustrated, and realizing like, this is not how I want to show up for my kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like all of that moment really made changes for me. And, you know, has it been a sunshiny walk since then? No, but that's all right. And I have amazing relationship with my kids and I've empowered them to go and do the things that matter to them without the fear of judgment. And it's really cool for me to see them have boundaries sometimes with me, but with other people in general about this is what they're doing. And this is what their life is like and and this is what makes them feel good and they don't care. Yeah, they don't care. But we help them get there. We yeah. help them step into that. Yeah. 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 It's the text that I just got a couple of weeks ago from my son who's in a thruple relationship with two other guys. And well, they've decided that every Thanksgiving they're going to travel somewhere. Last Thanksgiving, they went somewhere. This next Thanksgiving, they're going somewhere. And then the text I just got a couple of days ago from my daughter and her husband who said, hey, we're going to Iceland over Thanksgiving. Okay, so Thanksgiving this year is going to look a little different and it's going to happen at a different time. And, you know, I'm at the point where I'm okay with that because the traditions and the dogma that I grew up with, Mm -hmm. it doesn't serve them, you know, and it doesn't serve me to hold on to that stuff and get pissed off, but we always have things going you know, I it knew. Just let it go and revel in the joy of when we are together. Yeah. That looks like. I love traditions and they have to serve a purpose. Yeah. I find those in the way that I live out my faith and how I practice my faith. That's a very uh, traditional um, practice that I have. So I can have my traditions there and the rest of them have all gone to hell. So you know what? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so what? <laughs> it's okay. It's it okay. I-, I love you. You said, you know, it's all about sunshine and everything, but there's sunshine in the journey. That's the cool thing. You know, when my youngest son was little, he was a fit thrower and he was a fit thrower until he hit puberty and all his body chemistry changed. Um, But I was at the pediatrician's office one day and he's like, you know, look, when you have kids, there's going to be these mountaintop moments and there's going to be these valley moments and you get both of them, but focus on the mountaintop moments. And I thought that was pretty wise counsel from that guy, you know, 30 years ago. And that's what I've always tried to do is focus on the mountaintop moments with them. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's, well, I mean, it goes back to the phone, like it's all what you want to choose to focus on. It is. Okay. So you're going to love this question. 
Oh, good. So I heard somebody describe this recently, and I never thought about this, but she called it the big five diet, exercise, journaling, meditation, and affirmations. Okay. Uh, So the mindset and the personal development world. Okay. They kind of hold these things out as the holy grail of how you become aligned and you move forward when you're stuck. So my question is, uh, yes, you've used them. I know that. How did that work for you? What was missing from the big five there? I have to think on that for a second. And I don't, I'm going to say I do all of them and I don't do all of them all of the time. Okay. Same here. Like one of the things that I think has been really helpful for me is being consistently inconsistent. So I'm always working on my mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily all working on the same or using the same tools to work on my mindset all of the time. And there's part of me that would love to be able to do that. But I think I'd spend three hours a day journaling, meditating, affirmations, et cetera. I think what helps me the most, I don't, I journal the least right now is writing affirmations and gratitude from the place of it already having happened. Okay. So let's talk about that and talk about that for a second, because I have a, I kind of have a drum to beat about affirmations because my belief that works for me is that I can't just get a list of affirmations that somebody else has put together and blindly recite them because they might not be something that I espouse or believe at the core of my being. So when I'm reciting something that's not in alignment with my mm-hmm. it actually works against me. So the way I approach affirmations is through an intention process. You know, what is my intention in this particular area? And I write down the intention and then I create the affirmation from that. So how do you make affirmations work best for you? I write down different ones that come into my head every day, three to five, but it's, I've got to feel it. Like if there's no feeling, then it doesn't resonate with me. Yeah. And sometimes I write the same one for like three weeks and sometimes I write it twice and then I'm done and I move on to something else. But it's it's generally something that I feel like I'm working on in my headspace. And I'll also recite it during the day more as a reframe if I feel like a negative thought's coming in and I'm aware of it. But yeah, if there's, I'm not going to take somebody else's thing like that. I MEI is too many things as it is. So it's got to be generated from me. Um, And it, and I use it more as creating belief, undoing limitations, but from a place of rerouting the neural path pathways. Yeah. Yeah. I love meditating, but I don't meditate every single day in a quiet eyes closed mantra kind of way, but every day I do some type of meditation Mm -hmm. that maybe I go do a conscious meditation where I'm sitting in the backyard in the morning before the day starting, you know, listening to the birds, being aware of the wind on me, you know, taking in the, how the sunlight's moving across the backyard, you know, doing a mindful meditation that way. One of the favorite things I love about meditation is the downloads that I get. So mm-hmm. I have started having a journal by me so that when those things drop in, I just write them down. And I got this beautiful one. I want to share it with you. It says, uh, you have the entire cosmos here for you, encouraging you, here for you, cheering you on, helping you. Allow it to flow in, through, and for you. And that one was just like profound and it had so much meaning for me. And so I printed it out and I've got it taped up different places, you know. And and so that brings me inspiration. Mm -hmm. Maybe when I'm feeling, you know, like, you know, uh, today. So where do you go when you're feeling out of balance and where do you find inspiration? I have two videos that I've been listening to on YouTube recently. One's a money manifestation one. And the other one is like general life and the money manifestation one. I just like the guy's voice. Like it ch- that chills me well, out. Here, who is it? Who is it? I have no idea. I just, <laughs> I just hit history and it's like money manifestation. <laughs> so I do that. I have um, actually both of my, I'm looking at them right now. My, um, Vision board is the one from last year and this year. So I, I'll come in and look at them. 
um, when I'm feeling a little cranky. Um, and I, I mean, I also like, I have coffee first thing in the morning and I sit out on my balcony. You now that's nice. And just same thing, like let it yeah. chill. And then like one of the things I talked about last week too, was like, I was in a real, just, I woke up crabby, like just not in a good mood, feeling like the world was very heavy. And I took myself through just this little process of, all right, what's really bothering me? Cause it's not usually the top level thing. That's like screaming at my head. Right. So what was really bothering me? What was I making that mean? What the real truth is like, the truth is that these, these things that you're it's screaming in your head don't really matter one. And two, the truth is that this is what you're really feeling. Mm-hmm. And if you're really feeling that, then what can you do about it? Yeah. So that I was like, Oh, duh. Again, like reframe. And, and it was interesting because I felt very tight through that experience. And once I had, once I had the realization, then everything just kind of rolled off of me and I could feel my entire body relax. I could breathe more effectively. So I would highly encourage people to give that one a try too. So I consider that a type of meditation. Yeah, yeah it is. And I wrote it out. Like I yeah, journal. even though I don't like officially journal or do morning pages or anything, that writing piece for me allows me to have a couple of sensory diff- you know, different experiences so that um, it's coming out in different ways. I love that. Okay. So you and I are seasoned entrepreneurs. Yeah. Both have us work with people who are in different parts of their entrepreneurial journey, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes we work with, and I work primarily with women, although I do have some men clients who come to me and you do too. So when you're working with a beginning entrepreneur, someone who's just sticking their toe into it, what kind of advice do you offer that person versus what kind of advice do you t- offer a seasoned entrepreneur who's looking to expand and up level? Yeah. So, I mean, they're generally looking for two different things. Right. Um, yeah. And I work more with seasoned entrepreneurs, but I still have a couple of clients who are, they're newbies in this business. Maybe they've had a business before. And for the people who are in the more of the beginning phases, it's really about creating consistent sales and getting them, if they're in a roller coaster cycle, getting them in an upward growth trajectory consistently and also having them start to look at, you know, is their business really scalable and align their offerings and their marketing. So the sales come in, but so that it is scalable because most of my clients are fairly creative and they can generate ideas, programs, offerings faster than you can blink. And then really holding them accountable to that. My more experienced clients, it's, it's really one about refining their leadership and, and maybe even starting to build their leadership differently before we get to refine and having them track you know, some of their KPIs and, and look at results. And then it's team building. How are they being supported? You know, how is their team doing? How are they measuring the performance? What type of unity and flow are they building? And then there's some of it's like, all right, so you've gotten to this first or second level of of scaling, of growing, what's the next level, right? And that's a lot of fun because a lot of times you're like, oh, there's no way I can do that. And uh, and I just had that conversation with a client of mine. She's like, you know, I wrote a year ago that I was going to have two or three locations. And she's like, it's going to happen a little sooner than I thought it would. I, <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why we're talking about it now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm out of questions. I'm at the end of my sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, I, we could have gone down so many bunny trails, but I wanted to make sure we didn't do that. Uh, Jack Shepard is one of my favorite uh, podcasts to listen to. I don't know if you, he, no, he's Kristen Bell's husband and um, he's hilarious and he's irreverent and he, is a really good interviewer. And I think one of my favorite interviews he did was with Matthew McConaughey. So um, I'll have to check that out. Yeah. You know, they're real fun. So I hope I did justice to the takeover, the podcast. Uh, you did, you did totally different takes. So thank you so much. 
I'm going to cover this in the intro, but share everybody like who you are too and what you do. So I'm Judith Ritchie. Um, you've figured that out by now, yeah. but I have my own journey that brought me to where I am and that's for another podcast time. So maybe I'll be invited back as a guest to be able to share that story. And um, I help primarily women entrepreneurs who it's not mindset work that I do. It's a different level besides mindset because mindset's important. Personal development, personal growth is important. But what I have found in working with my clients who have that experience in that part of the world, it just created an awareness for them but there were no answers on how to deal with the stuff that was showing up for them. So I'm the how. Uh, you've got something going on. You've got a block. You've got a um, pattern that keeps showing up over and over that doesn't serve you. And you can't figure out how to get out of it or how to get over it or around it or through it. I'm the how. And the way I do that is using a methodology called healing from the body level up. It's energy and spiritual work that really gets underneath what's showing up for you. And we use um, the soul's deepest wisdom to drive the process versus just sitting in the conscious or maybe even using something like hypnotherapy or intuitive work uh, where there's still some guesswork going on. It's beautiful work. I um, I love what I do. Life is yeah. something I wake up excited about every day. Yeah. I see, and you're really good at it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I am. <laughs> It's part of my soul mission, though. This is the fulfillment of my soul mission, you know, and golly, it's a shame that it took me so many decades to get there. And so that's another reason I'm so passionate about talking about what I do, because I don't want anybody to have to uh, wait to be right. able to fulfill their soul mission like I had to. Yeah. Well, I think some of the younger generations are a little more clear, but for those of us who are Gen Xers. Yeah. We're all over the place. <laughs> so. But we're getting there. We're getting there. We, you know, are. we are. My husband is 12 and a half years older than me, and he's pretty stuck in his ways. And one of his ways is negative speak. And yesterday we were talking about his goals for the end of the year, and he's got a sales number that he has to hit to be able to keep his position. And he goes, you know, that last $100,000 is going to be the most difficult. And I went, stop it. Did you hear what you just spoke into existence? He's like, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. And I'm like, your words have so much energy. And I said, I just want you to hear yourself say that last 100,000 100, of my sales goal is going to be so easy because yeah. of all the I have. And he was like, well, I don't know about that. And it wasn't 15 minutes later, he walked back in and he goes, you know what? I think I really like the way that you said that and I'm going to adopt that and I'm going to think that way. And I was like, yes. And, and, and then he always said, because you've helped me so much in so many other things, I'm going to listen to you in this one. So I was like, yay. So, yeah. That's awesome. So and I yeah, like the, I mean, from a sales perspective that like the momentum's built. So that yeah. last little bit is really the easiest. It's just that most people stop. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so, yeah, so I help in all the ways that I can. Yeah. Good, good, good. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, for interviewing me. This has been a super fun take and yeah, we'll have to schedule a time for uh, you to come on as a guest too and share yeah, your infinite wisdom. Awesome. I am going to be starting an a new series on Instagram lives. It's called Embrace Hope because I see that um, we're lacking hope in a lot of areas in our life. And I'm going to be bringing on people, uh, you're on my list, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> for us to talk about how we can find hope in our lives through the different ways that we live out our soul mission. And uh, so you can follow me on Instagram at judith.force for transformation. And uh, those are going to be, I know for sure, Mondays at 10, starting 10 central, starting in the beginning of August, and then maybe a second one during the week. So we'll awesome. post about that there too. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for being a listener of the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I am so grateful for each and every episode that you tune in and listen to. And I hope that you get a ton of value that you can implement starting today. I do have just a quick favor. If you wouldn't mind 
hopping on to wherever it is that you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It would help us tremendously so that the Tribe of Leaders podcast can be found more easily and help inspire other entrepreneurial leaders.